Guys, welcome back. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be running through kind of a little bit of a bunny trail because I found this quite helpful when I was actually working on an enterprise app where I wanted to shoot like messages to the users. And, uh, you know, I was just looking for something lightweight and ran into iNotify, what you guys see on the screen now, by Nick Lockwood. And this stuff is crazy good because Nick Lockwood has a couple different frameworks out there. You know, check out his stuff at charcoaldesign.co dot uk slash all those little things behind it and with this particular tutorial we're going to be running through actually how to actually implement this with this quick little framework within your application and then how to pass messages to your users and this isn't ideal for like most applications but if you do run into case, like cases where you're going to notify the users and you don't want to use the apple notification push system and all that stuff um this may be a good option for you so, as we get started here, um, I take you to this GitHub page, and I'll put a link below so you guys can go to this, because credit is due to uh, Nick Lockwood and the Charcoal Design Company here, I think he owns it, but uh, as you see, basically this project here has a full documentation, I'm going to run you through how to like actually get into it, but first things first, we got to download this framework, and then we'll implement it within our our uh, basically our project that we're going to be doing a tester through. So I'm just going to download the .zip. You can clone it, you can branch it out if you know how to use Git, but uh, for the most of you guys out there, zipping it and pulling it in your project is probably going to be the easiest for you. So go ahead and download the zip there. Once you get that downloaded, you'll see um, the files that you get, uh, you know, license, readme, definitely look through those, and those are all list also listed on GitHub here, and uh, we'll go through that. But you'll see uh, we've got examples, so basically they packaged the iNotification within a couple examples. So if you guys run into different things that you want to do with your applications, look at these examples and see if they're close to what you want to do, because we're not going to go over everything, all right? And then you'll see the file or the folder named iNotify, which basically has three files. And as you'll know, uh, we'll go down to the installation of Nick Lockwood's expl explanation. But wait, basically these are the three files that we're going to implement within our project here. So. You'll see the purpose, this kind of gives you an idea if you want to use it or if you want to use other different frameworks to do the same stuff. But it is ARC compatible, so using most of your newer apps, you're going to be compatible with ARC. All right. So now we get down to the installation. And as you'll see, basically it says to install this, you just got to have the inotify h.m and the .bundle files in your project. But he also goes on to say that you can omit the .bundle if you're not interested in using the localized copy, which we're not really interested now but I'll just bring it into the project just for kicks the next thing that we'll do is it says to enable the notification you need to instantiate and configure I notify before the app has finished launching so we'll get into that and he says like the easiest way to do it's right here and then progressing forward so now what we have to do is we have to create our project so we can bring these three files into our project so I'm going to go into Xcode here. I'm going to go ahead and just select single view application or if you already have an existing application, skip this whole thing of creating a new one and just bring it into your newest one here. So go ahead and click next if you're uh, creating a new one. I'm just going to call this iNotify. Whoa. And uh, we'll just put uh, toot. And then uh, just make sure the use automatic reference counting is enabled because we are compatible with his framework that we were implementing here. So we'll go ahead and click next. And we're gonna save this wherever you guys would like, wherever your heart desires. And then uh, over on the left hand side, you'll see that we have some files that are pre-populated with the single view application. And we'll get into how to actually implement this here in a second. But first things first, we're gonna drag these three items, like Nick says, into our project, all right? And when you drag them in there, make sure that we have the copy items into destination groups folder checked and also the add to targets and go ahead and click finish. All right, once those files are in there, I like to put them in its own little folder so I know what I'm doing here. And so we're going to create a new group from selection. And we'll just call this uh, iNotify so we know what's within the folder because we have one other file that we're basically going to create and put in here for future reference. Okay, so now we're going to jump back to GitHub, and uh, basically he says the easiest way to do this is to add the iNotify configuration code in your app delegates initialize method, like this. 
And so I like when they're like, hey, just use this code and throw it into your code. All right. So I'm like, all right, I'll do that. As he said, he said, put it into your app delegates method or your app delegate class here. And we'll just go ahead and put it into the top here, paste that method in there. And it looks like we've got an error. And we're like, what in the world? So we click it and it's like, hey, I don't know where I notify came from. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to uh, basically import the class that Nick told me to import. Well, so we're going to get to that here in a second. But we're going to import the inotify.h into our project. So that's going to solve that uh, basically that issue that we had there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to GitHub and we're going to see what Nick says is next. And basically he's saying, oh, okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we have to place a plist containing your notifications on a public facing web server somewhere. All right. So he gave us this nice code here and he's basically saying we have this plist and it's going to be at this address, which we're going to come up with here in a second and it's going to be searching our app is going to be searching this URL basically every time the app loads and it has an internet connection it's going to go to that URL and it's going to say hey do you have any new notifications that I can give to my user if it doesn't it doesn't show anything if it does there's going to be a little notification that pops up on screen which we'll get to here pretty quickly so the next step is creating our plist so we're going to go within the folder here and I'm going to right click and add a new file or you can just go file new file whatever you guys feel like and within that uh, okay it defaulted to the OS X which we're actually gonna go up to the iOS and we're gonna go resources and we're gonna go to the property list there I don't know if they're different or what Let me, maybe they're the same I don't know but uh, we're gonna go to this property list go ahead and click next and just save it within your project there we're just gonna call it notifications and click create so now we should have a notifications.plist which exactly what Nick was telling us to do but now we have to configure it so if we go back to github you'll see that basically he has this huge you know configuration of the format that he's requesting and the formats particularly important because the code that he has within his classes and the framework pulls exactly what it what it says here so basically he says you know in his code he's like hey look for the title if there's a title show their string that they want to show alright so just giving the idea that we want to follow this exact format so if we scroll down a little bit further he basically says that we've got a, a key which the best practice is to use a date the reason for that is the message will be displayed in reverse alpha numeric sorting order by key so okay so I'll get to that and then uh, he says you know get rid of old messages and then he goes on to say that uh, we, need, we need to use title as the string title. We need to use message, action URL, action button, min versions. There's a few different things that we can do. It looks like six different things we can do within the property list that he has customized for us. So we're going to paste particularly, uh, let's, let's stick with the first four here. So basically the title through the action button. And we want to note that there's no space in between the action and the button here. So as you guys see that I'm not putting a space, you'll know that. So what we're going to do is go up to the root here, click the plus sign. And within the plus sign, we're just going to put in the date like Nick told us to. And he's a pretty cool guy. I guess I can do whatever he says here. And we're going to change this to dictionary because within our dictionary, we're going to create a few strings. All right. And I did that completely wrong because I want to do the, I want to basically have it embedded within here. So click plus. Okay, there we go. So now within our dictionary, we want to have a couple strings. So I'm going to go and create four of these strings. One being the title. The second being the message. The third being what was it? Action button. I think it was. Yeah. And then the fourth being the action URL. Okay. So now what we can do is once we have those four strings established, we can provide values for these va for these strings. So the title will be like, hey guys. The message will be like, check this out. And uh, within the action button, let's put like click here. To, well, I don't know how long this can actually be. We'll just be like click, uh, click here now. And then the action URL, this is going to be where we point the user after they click the button. So we could like cross promote, we could like 
you know, have a friend's app and be like, hey, check out this sweet app, download it today in the marketplace, and give them a link to that web URL, or we could just send them to, you know, another site that gives them information about something. In this case, I'm just going to do Google, um, because I don't have any actual URLs that I want to cross promote right now. Okay, so now we have the property list enabled, and the next phase is we have to put this property list on a public web facing server. All right, and so if you're not familiar with web servers, you may want to get a little bit more familiar with server side communications before you go too far into this. But the easiest way is going to be to go to like a hosting account. So, like, wherever you host your website or anything that you do on the website um, is going to have basically a file manager or it's going to have a place where you can put stuff that uh, the public can go to. And so, in this case, we're going to go to the files manager and you'll see that we're in the public HTML. So anyone can access these files from this area. So long story short, we're going to upload our notifications plist within here. And in doing so, uh, I just got to find my file, wherever that's at. I notification toot. And we're going to take the plist and just upload it. OK, so once it's complete, we can go ahead and click back and we'll find it within our within our files here which is notifications.plist has been uploaded so now that it's uploaded we have to take the URL where it's uploaded and I know the URL just because I've got our website hosted there and so it's gonna be quite simple to just change this from example to my bring back dot com slash notifications.plist and this is basically the end of the public HTML, the file name. Okay, so now what I want you guys to do is I'm gonna go and run this without any notifications popping up, just so you can see our app is pretty much nothing as of now. So we're gonna go and run this, and you'll see that we basically get the white screen, we don't get anything else after that. So once it loads there, you'll see we get white screen, a white screen, and nothing else. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and uncomment that. So now when our application loads, the first thing that it does is it initializes. It goes here and it looks to our web address here or our, our plist URL. Looks at the plist, it looks at if we have any comments there. If we do have a comment, then it's gonna post it. And so hypothetically, it should work. And once you run it, you'll see that, hey, we get this nice notification within our application. And so you'll see the first things first, we've got our title here. Then we've got a little message, we're like, hey, check this out. And then we get um, our action button. So our action button here is click here now. And if we click this, it's going to take us to Google. But then there's also two custom, basically built-in buttons. And these are, these are you know, complimentary from Nick Lockwood. He's basically like, hey, I don't want the user to be annoyed by these notifications that I post, so I'm going to have to remind me later. So if I want to check it out later and I don't have time right now, then click Remind Me Later. Now you can look into actually the details, but I think it's like somewhere like 24 hours later, it'll re-notify the user. And obviously Ignore is going to be like, hey, I don't really care about this message. Ignore it. Don't show it again. All right. So they give you a few different options. So we can click here now and it should take us to Google. And there we go. And so that's again some of the customization. So let me wrap this up for you guys. Um, if you go back to the GitHub page, if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see that Nick also has put in several different configurations. And this goes anything from like application version, which is like, you know, you're looking to see what kind of application version they have. And, you know, basically, if you have the latest version, you're going to display it in different ways. Or you're going to have different things that go on behind the scenes. And he's got all sorts of different stuff that allow you to configure the notifications to your likings. So take a look at those, implement those if you guys would like, and uh, it'll definitely make your notifications pretty, pretty sick. Now, last thing before I let you guys you know, jump off on the cliff by yourself is to actually go and implement this and, and to post additional messages is you go back to your notifications.plist. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And what you can do is basically you can copy this and we can paste it. All right. So now we have a whole nother dictionary started. And let's say we want to create another message on the seventh. All right. So we can create the seventh there. We can change the title of the message, all that stuff. And then what we have to do is we have to again go and take this and upload this to our public web 
facing server so then our apps can look to that server and basically get notified accordingly so it does make it nice if you're doing like remote notifications and you don't want to use the Apple push notification more of like a lightweight quick easy thing to implement within your applications this is definitely a, a sweet framework to get implemented into your your apps so hopefully you guys um, understand that um, shoot me anything you guys don't hopefully I'll get back to you as soon as possible and uh, I'll catch you guys a little bit later